We are finished the formal presentation section. We're now going to shift into the panel session. You'll notice we have no chairs here because we have the hotel didn't have enough chairs. But I'm going to invite all of our speakers plus two other folks who I know one is here. Uh, Jen, are you here? And Jamie, have you arrived? Right here. Oh, there you are. Okay, great. So uh, Pat, Pat, two Pats, Dan, John, Lance, Brandon, Bryn, Marsha, Jamie, and Jen, please come forward and bring your chairs. Yes, otherwise we don't have a place for you to sit. Oh, I, no. Oh, Teresa, do you want? Where are you, Teresa? Teresa, hello. Do you want to join the panel? Yes. Okay. Great. Next week. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you have seated in front of you the mind, the brain trust of the Delaware Valley for marketing and sales. We have the next 50 minutes. It's completely open for your questions. Uh, please uh, tell us your name and uh, your question. So this gentleman would like to begin. Thank you. Um, how relevant is a LinkedIn connection for retail customers? So every business person does buy consumer goods, right? So it's really important. What do you do? I sell uh, invitations. So, so there are a couple ways to go around that. Some of them, you could sell to VP of sales saying right now the best way to thank a client is through handwritten notes because nobody's doing it anymore. So you could take your product and convert that to a business need, and then LinkedIn is a really great resource for you. Is it always recommended? I have other people that want to connect with me for LinkedIn that I don't know. Is it always advisable just accept it? So it depends on your philosophy. As a salesperson, I tend to connect with more people than not. But there is a feature called reply, don't accept yet. So if you go into your invitations, if you go into your inbox and then invitations, you have reply and ignore, and there's a little tiny arrow that's hidden next to the reply. If you click on that, you can reply, don't accept yet. So dear Joe, thanks so much for reaching out and con connecting with me. Typically, I only connect with people I know. I'd love to learn a little bit more about how you think we could network together. Let's set up a time to talk. Or how did you find me? And how do you think we can work together? So you can start a conversation before actually accepting them. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my mistake. There were three people new on the panel that you have not met before. So Jamie, I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself for a moment. And Jen and <coughs> Teresa, I'm going to give you the microphone. Hi everyone, Jamie Broderick. I'm the founder of Network Now. I'm a <laughs> Bryn's like, oh yeah, I know you. <laughs> uh, network Now is a women's business uh, support network in the Bucks County area. I'm also a publicity coach. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Jennifer Gardella of jennifergardella.com and I am your social media expert. I help small business and medium-sized business owners get up and running on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Google Plus, and Pinterest. Hi, I'm Teresa Catalinas. I run um, a website, or I have my own business um, doing public relations, marketing, uh, social media, graphic design, and I work for Square Bucks County. Among others. Yeah. And if any, if any of you read an article in the newspaper uh, or saw our ads or anything, anything that was in print, Teresa is responsible for that. So thank you, Teresa. And also the radio show. How many people heard the radio show that Tim and I were on? One. One. Oh, yeah. <laughs> tells you something about radio, right? <laughs> but it, it, it was, what, 6 o'clock on Sunday morning. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Uh, who has a question? 
me just talk. Yeah, <laughs> I'm right. sorry about this. Bring it back. I've got a question for Marsha as for uh, involving email. Can you ge geographically separate or segregate your emails to a certain geographical area? You can. It depends on how you collect your information. So when you have a list of contacts, if you don't know where they are geographically, then obviously the answer is no. Okay. But if you know that they have a certain, I usually, I usually like to collect zip codes. That way, I kind of know where people are geographically. When I do webinars, I do webinars that are um, open to the entire United States and Canada, and so people in Canada have different laws with regarding to the, can the Canadian, can what I call the Can Spam Act, because in the United States it's called that. So I have to be able to address both. Okay, thank you. Sure. I have Earl Sigmund at the Business Learning Center. I have an idea how Google AdWords work because some of my clients have used it. How does how do you buy a Facebook ad? What's the difference between that, either cost wise or whatever? How does it work? Um, Facebook ad. So when you go into your, well, I'm not going to get too technical with it, but Facebook ad. Um, when when you go into the when you go into the console, you can just click on. Uh, you don't want to do a boost. There's like a boosted post there. Right, that's like a sucker bet. Don't do that, right? Don't ever boost that post. What you do is you go in there and you create a lookalike audience, okay, for, for ads. So in the lookalike audience, it's pretty intuitive, it will guide you through. And what a lookalike audience is, is it will, you, you put in Facebook an audience that is similar to the one that you want to market to. Well, engage with, I'll, I'll remove that word market, but engage <laughs> with. Um, so then you're putting in, say, if you're in the um, you know, entrepreneurial space, might be Lewis Howes or Tony Robbins. So you would put in those audiences, right, as a lookalike audience, and then your ads would show to people that like Tony Robbins and Lewis Howes. So that's a good way to kind of do the ads. But it will kind of talk you through it. I don't know if I answer your question or I'm just in left field. I have no idea. You localize it like Google AdWords. A hundred percent. Yeah, in demographics, you can really drill down to, like for SCORE, we did, uh, what did we do? Bucks County, Percocy, for every event, un unbeknownst to the people, but the, you know, we're, we're marketing to uh, Quakertown, uh, Bucks County, Fair Fairless Hills, for those specific events. So one, pe one segment, one demographic would receive one message, and another demographic will receive another message. So it, it seems as if it's coming directly to you. How much do these ads cost? Uh, ads start, it depends, it's not an ad cost, it's you put in, say, $10, $20, and that gets you a certain amount of views. So just sort of a rough estimate, $5 or, say, $2 might get you 150 different people who, who are going to view that. But um, you just have to be real careful. You just have to be real careful. You can blow a lot of money and not get anything in return. I've done it. So I, I still do it. <laughs> Start low and lock it down. Right? Wait, uh, wait, yes. Can I add to that? I answer. Um, the ultimate goal is to leverage the huge network within Facebook. There are so many people on Facebook, so the idea is not to just get your ad in front of people, but to convert those people on Facebook onto your email list. So you do that by giving away some awesome content in your ads. So your ad could be a free webinar or something like that. In order to access it, they have to give you the email address. Mm -hmm. So you are bringing in people that are interested in what you have to set, share onto your list, and then you can keep marketing or engaging with If you want to learn awesome Facebook posting, like Jamie's Facebook page, you might tell us your Facebook page so people can like it, because I, I did, and I thoroughly enjoy reading your Facebook stuff every day. So well, I post a job. lot on my personal Jamie Broderick, but I, my company's Facebook page is Network Now Connections, LLC. What is it? Network Now Connections, LLC. Okay, we go. Okay, this question is for Lance. I don't like that. Um, I'm a horrible audio learner. It's like my worst learning style. Um, and I loved your presentation. I think the starting point for me would be to go to the Google pages. Like I see they have a Google Analytics, Google Organics, start with this, start with that. But I wanted to learn the wonderful terminology you gave us. And then I looked at Mass? Was it mass? Oh. <laughs> it's a museum in Spain. No. Yeah. It's a museum in Spain. M-O-Z. Oh. What? M-O-Z. M-O-Z. Okay, well, see, that's the thing. I'm not an auditory learner. I didn't hear Moz and R. I don't know. But if I wanted to have a quick 
maybe someone in the room has an answer to this. If I wanted like a quick fact sheet of those terms and what they're for, and just so I wouldn't feel so lost, where would I go? Go to Moz.com. It's 2013, 2014, 2015. It's called SEO Website Design Cheat Sheet. Gives you every single name, every fact to it. So there's the last three years they produced one. Um, Raven also has the same thing. My SEO tool has the same thing. But do your best bet is to go to Moz for free, download it. If you email me, I'll email them to everyone. They're literally just the PDF, it's a cheat sheet. Okay, I'll email me. It's going to give you a whole Wikipedia. What does Moz stand for? Okay. It's just a name you used to have. It used to be Moz. It used to be Moz. It's just a name. It's just a name. I know it was available. Was it actually one follow-up thing? I love your graphics. I couldn't see them on the page or on the thing. So if there's any way to get those graphics. If you email me, I'll send them right to you. Everything. It's not a problem. The whole slide deck will be mailed to you afterwards. Oh, wow. Or a link to the slide deck will be mailed to you afterwards. Okay. Your website is on the slide presentation? Yeah. Yes. yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. Uh, my website's on SEO.com. Yeah, it's on the front page. Yeah. I have a question regarding resources that you can access on your own. Um, as a small business owner, a guy, and I hope that you all can appreciate this, but there's so much buzz out there. I'm almost at a point of, um, excuse the phrase, but like vendor vultures. It's people. They're. It's. It's nonstop. Of, buy this but and if you don't have a lot of financial resources like you say and you hit a dead road and yet and pretty soon your resources are going down so can you recommend ways that we can learn about um, your crafts if we can't necessarily we're not in a position as a small business owner to be able to contract with everyone yeah everything everybody set up here is the way to do what are the, I forget who said it or um, if you just you know, Google what it is you want to know about, right? And the people who have done the best job of, look, you can have a terrible uh, vendor who has a great SEO guy. Right. And he can get, he, you know, he might be able to get you, get his client who's terrible. But, you know, a vulture, as you say, but he gets his to be number one. But when you go to that website, Right, you should be able to tell if they're an expert by the con that's where the content comes in, right? If they answer the questions, if they seem like they have good stuff, and then you would contact them and talk to them. I was talking to uh, those guys back there, the next people <laughs> at, at the break, and uh, one of the things I didn't say in my talk, but you tell more about what you know by the questions you ask than by the statements you make. So if you call somebody up. Right, and they start giving you a sales pitch about what they do and how they do it, eh, maybe you don't want to work with that guy. But if they start asking you questions, just like if you went to a doctor because you hurt your arm, like I did a couple of years ago, I was playing basketball and I dove for a ball, it wasn't one of my more brilliant moves, and I, a couple of minutes later I couldn't get my arm past here, I went to the doctor now. So if I, and he said, what's wrong? I said, well, my arm doesn't work. <laughs> now, if he said, well, you came to the right place, let me show you a PowerPoint presentation on what we do with shoulders, and, you know, we've done, and as a matter of fact, we've also done some heart operations, and, I mean, that's not the kind of guy you would want to go to, but what's the doctor going to do? He's going to say, so how did you hurt it? Of course, when I told him that, he looked at me like I was nuts. But, you know, and he's going to ask you, how'd you do it? What'd you do? Can let me see you do this, do this, do this. And, and, and after he does a complete diagnosis, then he might suggest what you could do. So that's how you avoid the vulture, right? You judge them by how they approach you, not by what they're actually saying, is by what they're asking you. And you'll be able to have a much better uh, Thank you. experience. Uh, um, so uh, really what you need to do is figure out what you want to achieve. Right? And I know you're talking about how do I get some free resources, and there's a ton on YouTube, there's a ton of video out there. But what the very first thing you have to do is figure out what do you want to achieve, and what are you willing to do to get there. Now I'm just going to throw to Pat Walsh for one second. One of the things that he does that is so incredible, and he's not paying me to say this, but he looks at the whole picture and then tells you where it makes sense to go. It's not like he's coming in and saying, okay, we're going to read you your website, we're going to get you a new logo, and we're going to do this. So you need somebody, and, and I don't know if they do 
free consultations, it might be worth asking, but you need someone to look at what you're looking for and then figure out what it is that you need. Because everyone in this room needs something a little bit different. And so we could all say, hey, we could do this and we could do this. But like Dan said, if we don't know exactly what your goal is and what you're looking to achieve, there's no way that you know, you're going to keep getting things thrown at you and you're never going to know what you need. If that, does that help? Yeah, so yeah, there's an example with your uh, LinkedIn. It's yeah. a great tool that would be helpful to me in my business. But I'm going to have to make a considerable investment of time if I work with You have the a 79-minute free video that will pretty much give you a ton of more information than you'll know what to do with, and you'll be able to pick out what you need. So that's free. Okay. You, well, you have to pay with that, pay well, your email. Because I came here today and I found you, and I, but I'm just saying there's so much information, there's so much, it's overwhelming in terms of this has been the best panel I've ever seen. I've been to a lot of seminars, a lot of different things, and, and I've invested some money into some areas, and I would work with all of you if I had the financial resources. <laughs> <laughs> but that's my that's point. That's you've got to get your priorities. Right. But, that, and there's a process. What, what is most important? Is it Facebook? Is it LinkedIn? Is it SEO? Is it selling? Is it so I'm going to, uh, first of all, I do hear, I hear frustration. I hear overwhelmed. Everybody here is overwhelmed. Everybody in the digital world is overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Do you know how much I have to stay on top of things? It is impossible. Nobody knows everything, okay? I'm trying to level the ground here, okay? I understand the frustration. I didn't even own a smartphone two years ago, okay? I do now. I made it. So here's my point when I was doing my presentation and Bryn hit on it. Who's your customer? What's one thing, one, that you could do this month that you believe your customer would respond to. So if it was about education, we'd all be billionaires. It's not always about what you know, but it is who is your customer. And I do hope to empower you. Don't let anybody tell you who your customer is. You learn about it. And then if you go on YouTube and learn anything you want, but stay focused on your customer. The overwhelming is natural. Do you have kids? Yes. Was it overwhelming in the beginning? Yes. Did you figure it out? Yes. <laughs> that, that's what marketing is like. And honestly, the, the real tough part about what we're doing here is while we're talking, it's changing. <laughs> so the idea that you're going to get it right, the idea that you're going to figure it all out is not as important as doing one thing for your customer. If you could stay focused on that in one month, you'll have one thing over your shoulder. Think about the biggest impact you can make with the least amount of effort. And money. So I'll tell you the secret to the, and the answer to your question. What you're asking is where can you learn from on a regular basis? You've been given opportunity and access to a panel of people who collectively have done what you're trying to do. And we welcome you, I'm pretty sure, well, I can only speak for myself, but I'll throw it out there. Start to follow each of us and interact with each of us as much as possible. Anyone who ever asks me a question on social media, I love to interact with them. So, especially on Google+, Plus, because everyone's trying to figure that one out. <laughs> so, if, really, any of us that you ask a question about on Google+, Plus, we're probably all there. So connect with us and use that as your first line of resources. So the second thing is to look at those who you're chasing. When I got into this business I, and I put up my first website, I started chasing Maury Smith. And my business coach is like, wow, you're shooting pretty high. And I thought, well, why not? I'm not going to shoot lower than that. And I said, Maury Smith has an affiliate program. I want one too. And my business coach said, do you know what an affiliate program is? And I said, no, I don't, but Mari Smith has one. I want one, too. We call this Veruca syndrome, Veruca from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I want it, and I want it now. I don't even know what it is. So go after the people. Go after those small business owners who you're chasing who are successful. Go after people like you maybe in California who aren't competitors, 
but have made it in whatever, I don't know your business, but whatever it is you're trying to do. And like we say in the world of education, copy and steal everything you can. And just do it better. That's what I do for my clients. Who's your competitor? I'll do it for you better. What's an affiliate program? <laughs> so an affiliate program, if you're selling something online, you have the opportunity to offer other individuals the ability to sell for you. If you have a WordPress website, there's actually just a little plug-in, it turns out. Mari has it, and I do now as well, because <laughs> I copied what she did. <laughs> and so other individuals can put an ad on their website and actually sell my product for me. I give them money for it. I make money. I don't do anything for it. I didn't know what an affiliate program was until I looked at Mari's website. So that's really how easy it is to start to build what you need to build. I'll also share with you that at this point, if, you're, if your, res your financial resources are limited, you're going to have to put in the time. You know, you can't, it's, it's, and it's going to take you about an hour a day to learn what you need to learn. It's, it's a very honest estimate. That's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking about limited time, some people uh, hire other people to do their posts for them versus people doing it themselves. Uh, what are do's and don'ts in regard to that? I'm going to answer that question in a completely way that no one here would expect. Because I recently saw Barbara Corcoran speak, I was delighted that PNC offered a free webinar with her speaking. And someone asked the question, if I hire one person to do something for me, what should that person be? Should it be a PR person, an agent? And what she said was, if you're going to hire just one person to do something for you, it should be a salesperson, someone who's actually going to bring in money for your organization. Then they'll be selling, you'll have time to do the things you need to do. So someone else here probably has a more marketing answer, but that's Barbara Corkin's answer. Your question was about posting on social media. What should you look for? You need to look, no, no, to look for somebody to do it for you. Right, to look for someone to do it for you. Look for someone that you can really trust because you are going to hand over to them your passwords and your entire online presence. And the other thing is that someone who is never going to guarantee you success. You want to look for someone who's really honest. When I start to work with clients, I do exactly that. I put up their posts for them. They need to really understand exactly who you are, what your business is, and then you need to trust them as if you're trusting them with your bank account. Well, my recommendation is to not do it. If you're going to post something, it should be your voice out there, not, you know, I don't care how good they are. They can't say what you want to say. Look, I, I and I, I do this from experience. I had, I think one, two, th I had three other people doing it, and I, and I and I said I would see something post, and I go, what the hell is that? You know, I, it's like it, it, it would sound something like you might, but it, it would just miss the point. And it doesn't take that much time. I mean, I look, I sat down one day, I created 350 tweets. You know, you know, and I said, okay, fine. Now, now I have my assistant. She sends them out, but it's my voice, right? It's my, it's my thing. It doesn't take that much time. I tried to have somebody write a blog post. Well, that doesn't work, all right? I mean, it's, it, it was filled with platitudes and BS. You know, it, 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 and it won't be that pithy thing that they, that they, they do. So, you know, if you're going to do that, do it yourself. And don't and hire somebody to do the technology part of it, but write the stuff yourself. Or you mean to be authentic? Yeah. Authentically yeah. you. So there is no question. I mean, I use Hootsuite, so I schedule stuff, and I don't actually do it. My assistant does this. There are, they know if it's coming from Mashable, it's going to be good. If it's coming from Social Media Examiner, it's going to be good. So there are certain sources that you can let them know that you can share and pick from. You can also create RSS feeds. So if you find good blogs and good places for content, Every time something's posted, it can be emailed to your assistant. And they can add that into your Hootsuite. I blog every week, but seven times a day, I rotate my blog getting shared. I don't actually, I wrote the blog. I don't actually physically post that. Now, what you need to do as you is like, share, and engage. That needs to be authentic. If you are going to comment on someone's post, do not have someone comment as you. But I have no problem with actually having someone post things based on content I've approved. 
So there's a couple of things you need to mention or to remember on social media. It's not all about putting information out about you, 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 you. It's about sharing information and engaging with other people. So a good part of the time you're going to put informational, educational content out there, trying to engage with people, and a small part of the time you're going to promote yourself. So if you're going to look to have somebody else do it, they better understand what your business is, where to get informational content in order to promote the right type of content, and then also you're going to have to feed them some information as to what to post regarding what events or what, what's special on your website, any promotions you're running and so on like that. Um, it's good to have somebody to do it, but you need to make sure that it's somebody who understands your business and you can monitor and make sure that they're doing the right job. I, I'm going to add something just because I kind of disagree with my friend here. Uh, what he said about, you know, people can't do it. I'm going to I'm gonna just talk about in the room. There's analytics to Facebook, Twitter. What analytics does is measures the results of what's going on. Time and time again, no matter if you're a small business, medium, or large, people will come to us and be like, we wrote 20 great blogs, and my wife wrote it, or we wrote it ourselves. I'm like, great, well, that's awesome for you, but no one read it. Well, how can you tell? Well, I didn't see how many people went to that page last month, and so you took 20 hours worth of work that you killed yourself for, and it turned into nothing for you. But your grandma said it was awesome. Who <laughs> for you? So, but I will tell you one of the Nestle quick story. You gotta remember, I'm not here pitching when I say because we do very little social media, so I'll just put it out there for very fast. But Nestle quick called us up, you guys can Google it, three years ago. They, someone put a dead rabbit on their thing because they weren't a green company. And their CMO, who they had it in-house, responded back, you can't post on this. Do this type of stuff. It's our page. They had to take their Facebook page down. Inside of literally 30 minutes, they had over 50,000 comments attacking Nestle Quick. Yeah. you got to remember, you want to respond correctly. Now, granted, you guys, everyone here is majority small businesses, so it doesn't equate to you. But just think how you do react. People are watching. If you come back and attack someone, they're going to come at you. So it doesn't hurt to get advice from someone, especially an expert. I mean, I heard some of these people speak that do social media. They definitely know what they're talking about. It doesn't hurt to talk to them or anyone about that type of stuff. But don't wait. You guys, it seems like a lot of people are asking questions about how to do things. And Pat, I think his name is, you got to find a problem first and then get the solution. But don't just waste your time in spinning wheels. I mean, that's all I. We, we see it time and time again when people come to us. They put so much energy into things that don't make a nickel for them. Uh, um, Teresa. Teresa. Yeah. Not this great, what you just said. <laughs> I agree with some of the things that are already said. I didn't hear it. So you better try this. Sure. Can you hear me? When you're, when you're engaging marketing selling to nonprofits, is there any differentiating techniques that you would recommend? I think the trick on nonprofits, not that there's a trick, but you're engaging them on a much more emotional level. I mean, people are involved in a nonprofit because they want to help their fellow man. So I think that that's the part that uh, we all want to help each other, but in a nonprofit, that's important. The other thing that's hugely important, I think social media plays a much bigger play in, so in nonprofit, and transparency and credibility is huge. Um, the authenticity of what you're doing, proving what you're doing. So all of the same things are really there. It's the same kind of a, um, you know, nonprofits make money. They raise money, but they still make money. So there's a lot of those same principles. It just shifts, I think, a little bit more to the personal side. That's all I've noticed. Um, yeah. yeah, okay. Are you working for a nonprofit or marketing to nonprofits? Marketing to nonprofits. Oh, I'm terribly so, sorry. <laughs> one thing that I've learned in, when I've worked that. with nonprofits is a key piece is to understand that they probably have a little bit of staff and a lot of bit of volunteer. <laughs> and so your job is not only to connect with the individuals and to try to make the staff their job easier, it's really to get buy-in from the volunteers who usually maybe give you an hour now and then they forget about you and come back and have five hours next month. And so it's a very scattered experience. And your job as the one who's marketing to them is to understand that you need to control that. It's, it's a joy of working with nonprofits. <laughs> That's the only way to take it. Yeah. <clears throat> From a sales standpoint, there's a, absolutely no difference selling to a nonprofit or selling to a, um, 
uh, you know, for-profit business or selling to the government or selling to an individual or selling to somebody in their house or there's no different. The, the process is different. No, the process is no different. I used the uh, analogy. I remember, I was an engineer, so this is where this an analogy comes from. But there's a process for design, right? And no matter what, you know, some, sometimes you go through that sale, that design process and you end up with a building like this. And sometimes you go through that design process and you end up with a Taj Mahal. And sometimes you get a house and sometimes you get an outhouse. Right, but the process is the same. And certain elements of the process will be slightly different. Like if I'm building this building in California, it would have to be a different shape because they have, cal they have earthquakes out there. We don't have them here, right? So there's certain elements that will be different, but there's really no, no essential difference that you have to worry about. You just have to be yourself and focus on them, like I was talking about. Could we answer you, sir? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Christian Zewa Williams. Uh, Tim. Something I wanted to just, I wanted to take a step back. I know Tim. I'm not on the panel, but I wanted to, uh, just something I uh, wanted to mention about uh, social media is that social media in and of itself, um, at least from what I've seen, is not organically, it's not designed organically to be a promotional platform. It's designed to be an engagement platform. It's designed to be a medium for uh, for anybody to provide value to uh, to others um, in you know in any way that would be uh, that would be necessary, and in in providing that value, you uh, there, there's you have to look at uh, where people's attention is, and people's attention, of course, is now on social media. It's in the uh, it's in the uh, in the electronic sphere more so than it is in their own backyard. So, in order to um, in order to bring that value, you first have to get their attention, and in order to do that, well, you put out great content. So, just wanted to yeah, throw cool. that out there for that. So, I was just going to say the key word in social media is social. Yes, just be social. Yeah. Build so, relationships. Although, very few of us need new friends, right? How many are looking for new friends? We are looking for business, right? So, the social media, right? Social media, there's the new term social selling. We can sell on, we can't pitch on social, but we can sell on social. So selling starts with listening, and then it moves on to educating and adding insights to engage people, and then it moves to prospecting. And prospecting on social, if you are in a B2B, is to get a call. That's what you're closing for. You're not selling your stuff. You're not trying to pitch and say, you gotta buy my services. What you want to do is engage them enough through insights and content that you're worth having a phone call with. And so in social selling, you are being social in the engagement piece, but you need to convert it to the phone call. I don't care what anyone says, unless you're selling online and then you're converting to the sale there. But most of the people that I work with don't sell with a click. Most of them, it's you, you have to have the conversation. So I don't want to say that we can't sell on social media, we just can't pitch. Is that fair to say? That was more what I meant. Yeah, that okay. I think I, I may have uh, misspoke, but I mean, the, the difference between, um, you know, hi, you know, buy my product, you know, buy this, buy this, rather than, uh, you know, what are the challenges that you face in trying to achieve, you know, something that. You know, but also so adding, so there's a combination. Asking questions is great, but also showing that you're a thought leader and subject matter expert is absolutely vital. If you are not sharing your insights, if you are not offering tips and strategies and ideas, no one wants to have a phone call with you. You're never going to convert it because you asked them 20 questions. You're going to convert to phone calls because you gave them enough insight that they want more. Right? So I think that's important. I have another turn. If I can borrow this mic one more time, I have a concern about um, giving my customers too many emails to the point at which they might be turned off. How often do you email them now? I don't. I'm starting yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I Very, very good. Typically, most of most regular businesses that just are providing 
a, a tip or two per month, you want to just email them once a month or 10 times a year is usually the average. Okay, 10 times to 12 times a year, okay. There are a few businesses that get around, get away with more. Land's End is really good at that. I get like two a day, okay. <laughs> and why do I put up with that? I swipe it, scan and swipe, scan and swipe, but occasionally they have one that gives me a 40% discount. I'm waiting for that one. <laughs> So, so there's a reason I follow. I go go along with their their game, okay? Uh, if you're a restaurant or something like that, sometimes you have a weekly special. Um, otherwise, for most people, it's like a monthly thing. It's just reaching out to touch. Remember those seven touches with something different every time. Come up with a brainstorm. Come up with about 100 things you can talk about. It's like he was saying before. You can easily come, probably come up with 100, 200, 300 things you can talk about. <coughs> Pick one each month. Just ask them how often they want to be emailed, and you'll, you, your anxiety will go away. When, when, whenever you're used to sign them up, say you want to get something once a day, once a week, once a month, and then do it. So, that, that, with most things in sales, they're simple. These guys have all complicated stuff. Sales is pretty simple. If you want to know something, just ask them. And if you're worried about something, just tell them you're worried about it, and then see what they say. Just yeah, I guess, you know, and I hear a lot of the questions, and that's not uncommon, but, you know, you, there, I'm going to go back to this point. What's your strategy? Who are your customers? And try one thing. Because we're, we get too bogged down in all of the tools, and there's hundreds of them. Every one of us up here has different tools. We're all using successful tools to help our clients be successful. Think of that. There's not one tool that's working for every single one of our clients. There's multiple tools. So if you get too bogged down into, oh, well, how many times should I send out an email? I'm not sending any out. You know, my, all of our response would be, well, send something out. The problem's going to be you're afraid because you're going to make a mistake because I don't know how to do it. But if you go on YouTube and watch two YouTubes, I swear to God, you'll know 75% of what you're supposed to know. But you got to start doing something. Holding, stiffening, and being afraid because it's overwhelming. Too much information, way too many consultants, too many vultures. I get it. But that's no reason. You still had kids. <laughs> you just got to start somewhere though and I hear this a lot when I get asked questions and they're all tool based what do you think about this what do you think about that would that work for me would that work for me and the truth is if you get your customer get a strategy pick a tool or two and as the gentleman said fail fast and keep going track it and go but there, you can't get into every single possible detail of how it could go wrong I'm telling you you will freeze and it, you can't get anywhere. And all of us up here, half of what we do is listen to our clients and push them through the fear. You know, I was going to say, if you're worried about making a mistake, I can allay all of your fears. Because I guarantee you that you will make the mistake. So there's no way to avoid it. So just go out and make as many as you can, as fast as you can. <laughs> Thank you. I have not heard much talk about Twitter and how to turn it into either a prospecting tool or. Okay. The answer is we didn't have time on the agenda for, okay. Okay. for a Twitter so, person. You know, Twitter is really a, a platform that most business people are underutilizing. So Twitter can do a few things for you. Number one, it's highly, and the SEO guy may say, it's really hot. Google really um, indexes twi tweets. Is they that correct? Yeah. yeah. They make it live time to their search results. So, so if you are tweeting great content with the right keywords, you're going to be found. So number one, I think just for SEO purposes, and I'm glad you agreed with me because I would have been embarrassed. But, <laughs> um, right? So tweeting that content's huge. Number two, there are things called tweet chats. Almost every single industry is represented in a tweet chat. It's a community of people that come together one time a week. It's pre-scheduled. And it's a whole bunch of people talking about a topic that you're interested in. So find the tweet chats where some of your prospects are 
in. And they may not all be in there, but if you find 15 or 20, and I have actually hired people through tweet chats, and I've been hired through tweet chats, but it's about, that's where the engaging comes in. I'm not selling, but I'm now connecting with them on LinkedIn, and then we're communicating, and they see my content, and we have a conversation. I hired someone to do all my Google Plus stuff that I met in a tweet chat. Yeah, so, um, one question. thing that I use, that I use toward, I don't know why. Um, well, one of the things that I use uh, Twitter for is, is to uh, to show that I actually exist because the um, the amount of effort that it takes to engage with somebody. I mean, you got 140 characters, and it takes about three seconds to say, "Hey, thanks for connecting with me." You know, I, I was during the break. I was standing over there by the window. Everybody who followed me in the last day, I was just tweeting back to them, letting them know, "Hey, thanks for you know, thanks for following me. Great to be connected. You know, you know all that." And uh, you know, it, it really shows that you actually exist and that you're human. And being human is, you know, what it's really all about. You can actually buy products on Twitter now. Also, I don't know if everyone knows that. It's to the feed. So retailers, people that sell products, you can actually buy now right through Twitter. So they enhanced that about 60, 90 days ago, BJ. Yeah, about nine days ago. So people that sell products, you can actually buy your product right through Twitter. Um, you're going to see Twitter being indexed on Google for the long tail, not for the big keywords, but definitely the long tail as you're going to see Twitter. I would definitely tell anyone to use Twitter as a podium for yourselves. Uh, Jen? Has, uh, okay. I'll give it to you, Jen, in a second. <laughs> um, I would just suggest if you're on Twitter to create lists of perhaps your clients or perhaps the media or perhaps the top thought leaders, whoever it is that you want to follow and engage with and get their attention. So for instance, I have a Twitter list called Network Now Members. So I'll just go through, I'll click the list and I'll see all the tweets of all the members, most of who are not on Twitter. We have to work on that. And so then I can retweet, share, comment like that, that because you can't keep up with the live feed. It's like the life of a tweet is maybe two minutes. Yeah. And then it's gone because there's so much less than that. Why no eight seconds? He's given the time of the tweet will go through your feed. Wow. Yeah. If you have real followers, right? Yeah. Right. So I find Twitter is great for connecting with people that you normally wouldn't be able to get in touch with. So that's how I've actually created real relationships with authors, top thought leaders, media people, because I'll start following them and sharing their stuff. People think, what is networking? Networking is all about supporting others and creating relationships. Well, they're like, well, a New York you know, TV anchor, what do they need my support for? Everyone needs support. You just have to figure out what their needs are. So maybe they want more eyes on their Twitter feed. Maybe they want people to watch their show so you can retweet their stuff and share their stuff and comment and yeah. Yeah. So Twitter is the cocktail party of the internet. That's the best way to look at it. And you have the opportunity on Twitter to reach a group of individuals who you won't actually find anywhere else. Your job as a small business owner is to be everywhere in a unique way. And I know many of you, like pretty much everyone up here, we all hope to hand our businesses over at some point someday, whether it be to our children or to sell them. And right now, the hottest markets moving on Twitter are the kids, right? And actually, men, the demographic of men around the age of 50, as well as older folks. So if you're trying to reach those specific demographics, you're going to be, need to be on Twitter to actually reach them. The goal is to make Twitter as easy as possible, and this is what Jamie was getting to. If you can create a Twitter list on Twitter itself, you then can put that into Hootsuite, and you can actually manage all your social media right from there. So that's your progression. Twitter list, which you have to create on the platform itself, download it into Hootsuite, which is very easy to do. Explain and then, I'm sorry? Explain Hootsuite. Oh, so yeah, it was mentioned before. So Hootsuite is by far the, one of the best tools to use to manage your social media. It also happens to be one of the least expensive, quite honestly. And you can download each of your social media platforms into it. You pay $10 a month and you can have as many platforms on there as you want. And then you can play around with it. Mine looks 
like a spaceship. I've got all these things for clients and my own personal social media and my business social media. And you can go through and say, okay, Jamie can go in with her Twitter list, download that into a Hootsuite account, and go through it and retweet and comment right from inside that platform. So you don't need to um, sign in to Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and LinkedIn every day. You can actually do that right from Hootsuite. Now again, the automation can be, one, a little overwhelming at first, and two, you can look ridiculous if you don't look incredibly authentic. So be very careful when you're doing this because social media is social, as we've already said. So you have to take the tools, but also remember you have to be yourself. We have about five minutes remaining. Is, it, is this a quick question, or, or can it wait? It important? <laughs> or can it wait for the breakout it's session? A good question. I don't know if it has a quick answer. Though. Okay. <laughs> Quickly, what's the question? Okay, my question is: I have a 501c3 youth orchestra at Satterton, and I, I'm not quite sure where my marketing needs to lay. It used to lay in the schools and the kids, and you can't really do that anymore. Um, so now I'm trying to do Facebook and Twitter. I'm trying to get my social. Um, the name out there on our apparel um, uh, and playing out in the community and I just feel like I'm spinning my wheels coming around trying to approach everybody so if I treated you guys like the voice which one of you could help you help Brent, me the best? Brent and I say you need to get on video YouTube. We are on YouTube. So video can go everywhere though. Video yes. like just today I video it's been on three Facebook, of the speakers. It's been on Twitter, it's been on every Periscope. But I'm not I sure where to play who to I market. Periscope the last three speakers live on the internet through Twitter. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. You didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but explain what Periscope is. Yeah, the Periscope is a live stream video app that Twitter owns. There's another one called Meerkat. Either one depends. They're kind of the same. They just they kind of just work a little differently as far as the comment stream and everything. But basically, I just created a headline and hit broadcast, and the entire presentation was sent out to the world. Anyone that was following me or those hashtags, which I put in hashtag LinkedIn, hashtag business, put scores name, and then people can watch it live, and for 24 hours they can watch the replay, but I can also capture it on my phone and then upload it to YouTube, to Facebook, wherever I want. So it's, but video is so powerful, images and video. Okay. Do, do videotape some of the, the practicing, yeah. or the practices, and get it out there. And the other thing is create events on Facebook, yep. and, um, and have the video on, on okay. an event page, All right. right? So that when you're sharing that, and the other thing I do is when you have a concert, uh -huh. I don't know how you do, 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 well, yeah, get, get, get email, email addresses. <laughs> yeah, definitely get email addresses, and also make sure everybody's checking in at the concert. So they can check into that event. On so Facebook. On Facebook, right? Uh -huh. So then everybody, all their, not, whoever's on Facebook at the time sees that Jane just checked into this concert. Ooh, how cool, I had no idea about that concert. Right. And then on the check-in page, make sure that you've got links to buy the tickets for the next concert. You can take that question up in more detail during the breakout session. We're nearing the end of the panel session. I'm going to ask each panel member, I'm going to pass the microphone down, to take and give us, uh, take 15 seconds and give us one message that you'd like this audience to take away from today. So, Brandon, I'll start with you. Take the microphone. Um, I would say use social channels for listening. Use them for listening. If you sell saddles, then go on uh, advanced search or Facebook and put in the search bar, saddles, right? Everybody who's interested in saddles or taking pictures of saddles is going to be there. It's right there in front of you. All you need to do is listen to it. Everything that you need is right there in front of you already. I would say prioritize. There's so many different things that you can do, and some things may work for you, some things may not, but I would look at what you want to do and what you think is going to be best at helping you do that. I would have to say don't break the chain, just like Jerry Seinfeld was so successful and had this theory when he was writing, make sure you do something every single day to be building the marketing for your business. Even cross it out on a calendar just like he did with a big red X. Make the chain and never break it. Well, I'm going to steal what Pat probably would have said. I saw the movie City Slickers, and Jack Palance had that one. What's the thing that makes you who you are? One. Just do one thing. I bet Pat will say the same thing. Uh, <laughs> know your customer. 
know your customer, and take it from there. I'd like to offer you the number one rule of holes. Anybody know the number one rule of holes? The number one rule of holes is if you're in one, stop digging. So, you know, if you're stuck, the number one way to stay stuck is to not do anything. So I would say go out today or tomorrow or as soon as you can and do something, do anything, like what she said, do one thing, fail quick. With what I would take away out of this whole thing, if it was me, is um, metrics. Every single thing I do, every breath I take, every action I take, what's the metric I get back? What's the ROI? So I don't keep doing the same thing two, three, four times without the results. Metrics. I would say after you leave this event, don't just put your notes away in a drawer and not connect with anyone. Everyone that you met that you want to build a relationship with, the panelists, people at your table, go to LinkedIn, send a LinkedIn request, and follow up with them. And then also do something on your notes that you learned today. Awesome. Uh, I would say the absolute number one thing to do is before you go after any cold business that you know, you're cold calling or knocking on doors, start to leverage your network and your clients first. You are going to have a much higher success when you are working through your current network than when you are out there just fishing in a huge ocean. And since I'm not here to talk about anything social media related, I'll still say, when you want to start your business, know yourself, know what you want to accomplish, and set your goals and go after it. John, take us to lunch, John. <laughs> <laughs> a number of years ago, there was a book written called Do It Wrong Quickly. Whenever you're advertising, whenever you're marketing yourself online, it's a combination of your website, it's a combination of social media. The point of that book is, you got to start somewhere, and I've heard it here a few times. If it gets too complicated, simplify, prioritize, start something, do it wrong, make adjustments until you get it right. Thank you. Now is life.